Are you interested in Bitcoin at all? All right, Peter Schiff. So, you know, if you ask your mum nicely, maybe we should buy you an ice cream with, uh, with Bitcoin. <laughs> Do you think they like digital currencies? I don't know. <laughs> Hi, my name's Chris, and I love Bitcoin. I initially wanted to visit Gibraltar to find out if Binance would open an office here as another entry point to Europe. Long story short, they are. I also wanted to explore Bitcoin adoption on The Rock, as it's known locally. In particular, I wanted to see how the Lightning Network, a layer 2 payment solution built on Bitcoin, was being accepted in Gibraltar shops. Hello, it's Joe from Cointelegraph. I am speaking today to people on the streets of Gibraltar about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency adoption to see what the vibe is. Hi there, mate. Do you know what this is on my t-shirt? Yeah, Bitcoin, sorry. Do you want to talk about it? Okay. Yeah, okay. He knew what Bitcoin is. Do you know what that is? The B? No. So you guys know what this is, right? Yeah, Bitcoin, of yeah. course. I know what Bitcoin is. Yeah. I've also had Bitcoin. So you're thinking about maybe buying some more? Um, it could be in the future, but right now I'm like uh, saving up for some other stuff. 28, she's 25. You live for so long. They live same as us, 60 to 80 is average. No way. Yeah. What type of breed is it? They're actually Triton cockatoos. Triton are part of the sulfur crested family. Wow, okay. Do you think they like digital currencies? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Can you tell me what this is? I don't know. You don't know? How about your brother? Coin. A coin? Yeah. What kind of coin? Uh, a big coin. Bit, big coin? Bitcoin. Oh. Have you heard of Bitcoin before? Yeah. Yeah. What do you know about Bitcoin? Nothing. So Bitcoin is a currency which is, has no ruler, no creator, and it can be used all around the world. Oh. And um, so, you know, if you ask your mum nicely, maybe we should buy you an ice cream with, uh, with Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any of these things? Yeah, I do. Yeah? What can you tell me about Bitcoin? It's just decentralized finance, I guess. Maybe nice. It's safer there than in the bank, I guess. Are you Gibraltarian? Yeah, I am. Okay, so you're born and raised here? Yeah. And um, what do you think the approach is to Bitcoin in Gibraltar? I think everyone's a bit like scared, like family members and stuff, like, oh, crypto, like, it's a bit scary kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is, you know, like, the world is moving faster and faster every time. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of the news in Gibraltar recently that, you know, Costa Coffee accepts Bitcoin? There's big Bitcoin companies here as well. Yeah, I saw your tweet and it's just like, wow, it's <laughs> mind blowing. You saw my tweet? Yeah. Am I famous in Gibraltar? Yeah, you're famous. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> mate. Bentley? Yeah. I've had that before actually. It's, uh, it's Bentley. It's Bentley. Bentley. It's not Bentley. It's Bitcoin. Oh, you, know, you know it's a Bitcoin. How do you know it's a Bitcoin? Because it's got all those weird numbers on it. The weird numbers or this ABC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, where have you seen that before? On the TV. On the TV. Do you remember which um, program or cartoon it was? How's it, Squidward? Okay, amazing. But did you, you two didn't recognise it? No, not at all. That's amazing. Just goes to show, right? No, she's on the internet. Ah, okay. Uh, ah. I don't have a clue how to use the internet. No. <laughs> okay. So how does it work? It's a, so it's a decentralised currency, which means that basically there's no like central bank or no big figure behind it all. Oh, it was code that was written, and it became valuable over time. So uh, at one point in 2010, 2011, it was worth one dollar. Now it's worth. Oh, do you know how much it's worth? Do you know? Do you want to go for a, how did it, how's it a guess? $40. $40, okay, so it's now one Bitcoin is worth about $22,000 today. What? $22,000. For example, I buy 100 pounds of Bitcoin bits. Yep. And then, then what do I do, leave it there? Yes, yeah, so you take custody of it, which means that you actually, you don't own it, but you own the keys to access it. So, so and that, no one can touch those hun that 100 pounds exactly. worth? Exactly, yeah. Okay. And then the idea is that it accrues value over time, which it has done historically. And then I can sell it like a stocks and shares. Ah, that's the amazing thing is that one day you won't actually have to sell your Bitcoin, you'll be able to use it. Like it costs a coffee, to buy your coffee, or maybe to buy a car, or a house, or anything else. Y tú tienes ahora Bitcoin, tú has comprado Bitcoin, ¿sí? for a while now. And you've seen a difference. I love that you don't trust me. <laughs> I'm wearing the t-shirt though. He's okay. No, but he's local. He needs to, he's, he will tell me, no? I would do the do same thing. Do have a code? He's going to tell you the same. He's going to tell you no different. ¿Y puedo comprarlo ahí? Did you want to get it? Did you want to get it? 
I might buy some. Yeah. But if I buy it here, can I only use it here? Or I can use it anywhere in the world? It's global. Global, a global. Yeah. That's a good idea. That is the right answer. Put it in her name. name yeah. Forget about it. It's generational wealth. Hi. Do you know what this is on my T-shirt? Uh, it's Bitcoin. Great. That was quick. Straight in there. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, presumably, that means you, you might have some Bitcoin. I do. Um, it's like a decentralized digital currency. Smashed it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, how long have you known about Bitcoin for? Um, about. Five years. Okay, so, nice. Yeah. yeah. Have you been buying for that long as well? You don't have to say that actually, that's very personal investment things, but <laughs> no, I would say at first I was a bit skeptical I think because everyone is, but maybe over the last couple of years I've dabbled with it and stuff like that. So Oh nice, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. cool. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you live in Gibraltar? I do now, yeah. Do, yeah but yeah. you sound like you're from Liverpool. You, yeah. You're yeah. English okay, originally, right? I? Okay. <laughs> so, lock me up, officer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, wow. and so what do you think of the Bitcoin sort of vibe in Gibraltar? Do you think people are quite open to it? I do. I think yeah. a lot of businesses have started to open in Gib. Um, mm. We've got a lot of exchanges. We've got eToro. Um, I know that we've had a few crypto only exchanges as well, like Bitso um, mm -hmm. and Zappo Bank, which is just there. I wonder, why, wonder <laughs> why I'm stood here. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I'm shilling them, but yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. And did you know that at Costa Coffee, um, a couple of other retailers, emergency even, they are accepting Bitcoin over Lightning as well. Have you ever used the Lightning network before? I have never used okay. it before. Well, I'll have to send you some, my phone's currently recording, yeah. but I'll send you some sats over Lightning and you can see how it works. Perfect. It'll, it'll blow your mind. Yeah. What's your name, sorry? Uh, Laura. Laura Great. and Joe. Joe. Nice Lovely to meet you, Laura. <laughs> Pleasure. Cool. Remember that bank I was stood in front of, Zappo Bank? Well, I interviewed them because they custody Bitcoin for customers all around the world. And so just to go back to the advantages of being based in Gibraltar, um, what does that mean being a crypto or a Bitcoin native, um, in your case, Bank? I, I, think, I think that if you speak, it's not really even directly relevant to Gibraltar. You, any country in the world, if you want to have an interactive discussion with a set of policymakers, regulatory authorities, government representatives, finance center or equivalent, wh whatever um, that means, it's extremely difficult to have those conversations round the table and for them to be like agreed on a single uh, path or, or set of steps that need to happen. Yeah. Um, but, but here, it, it, it is possible. Because everyone's within a stone's throw of one another. Everyone's within a stone's throw, throw. Plus, you know, there's also like, we've been doing it for so long and the starting points were very, very difficult. People asking ridiculous questions and not understanding anything, including any regulators, they start to learn about something. Yeah. It, they're sort of getting to gri grips with what it is. Whilst here, the regulator has been dealing, supervising, monitoring this activity since 2017 or whatever it was. And, and they're just at a completely different level, the, the things that they're talking about. Yeah. And that's, that's really, really, really advantageous. I'm sure you're familiar with Coin Corner in the Isle of Man. They're big on the retail side of things, merchant adoption. In Gibraltar, it seems like it's much bigger on the sort of, I don't want to call it custody, but you know, the idea of setting Bitcoin savings here instead. Um, is that a fair summation, firstly? And what do you make of the strides that have been made into merchant adoption in Gibraltar recently? You know, there's now Costa Coffee accepting Bitcoin, Hotel Chocolat, there's a couple of bakeries. Um, Apparently, there's a few jewelers as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, I, I mean, I think I didn't. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't start out like in Gibraltar. PLC didn't start out with the idea of like this is a partic particular application or sector that we want to build this for. We said we want to set a very high standard. Mm. We, the gaming example, so online gaming, it's massive here, right? Massive, biggest in the world. Yeah. The process that we went through in the gaming universe is kind of what we went through in the crypto um, ecosystem. Okay. Saying, well, we, we don't want to have 800 licensed gaming platforms here. We only wanted, I think there are 25 now in total, mm -hmm. but it's the big names. For a population of 30,000. Yeah. It's well, a very big, it's a very, very big names. And the crypto space, it was the same. So it's very difficult for small, um, you know, merchant platforms, it's very difficult, but I'm not convinced that retails in Gibraltar or the UK are going to suddenly start accepting BTC as a, a, a payment layer. I mean, look, 
it's a stage of development and if they start doing that and then lightning gets um, the traction that it can get could that become relevant to certain other internalized sort of payment networks or mechanisms possibly um, but it's not personally just for me I don't really see BTC as like a day-to-day -day, uh, medium of exchange, medium of, of exchange. see it more yeah. as like a storage of uh, value yeah so yeah. it's but but its application and use and all of these different things that I mean I think it's great to have it explored and developed it's the and it, right? used. exactly for every exactly. every different person it's you know a different thing I'm never going to say that's wrong and you've got it wrong um, <laughs> stop but spending I'm, your yeah, BTC but I'm never going to say this is great now you know GBP and USD are going to evaporate because <laughs> um, <laughs> not quite not quite there after speaking with the Bitcoin bank the next logical step was to go one rung up the financial ladder. So here I am talking to the Minister of Digital and Financial Services about Bitcoin and crypto in Gibraltar. It turns out that Albert Isola is a hodler. Hello, my name is Joe Hall with Cointelegraph. I'm here today with Albert Isola. Albert, how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Very nice to see you and welcome to Gibraltar. I'm here at the moment because there's been certain retail and merchant adoption waves in the Bitcoin space. And similarly, Zappo, which is at one point, it was one of the largest custodians of, of Bitcoin in the Indeed. world, I think. I need to double check that fact, but I'm pretty confident. Um, is based in Gibraltar, and they saw it as one of the safest, securest places to, yeah. to secure that Bitcoin. Um, does the regulator see Bitcoin as separate to uh, crypto or to separate, uh, separate to other DLTs, or is it all sort of under the same umbrella? I think we regulate the businesses that hold these. Okay. Uh, digital uh, assets or digital stores of value. Mm -hmm. um, and so we want to do is control the people that touch them. Um, because if they are touching them for you by way of business, we want to make sure that they're doing things properly. And that they know what they're doing, and that they have a viable business plan, they have capital in the bank to ensure that they're able to get out of a problem if, they, if things go bad. Mm -hmm. So all of those things is the global picture. Um, and provided they comply with what we require them to do yeah. from a regulatory perspective, yeah. Um, then the rest is really up to them. So when you talk about adoption of the use of Bitcoin, is it going to come? Yes, it is, more and more, as more and more jurisdictions mm -hmm. begin to regulate. And okay. what is, for me, the ideal? The ideal is when there are enough countries doing it and we have an internal, international standard regulation where everyone has to comply with, mm -hmm. then it will be enormous, in my view. And, and what about you personally? Would you spend your Bitcoin? I mean, do you have Bitcoin first? And I do then have Bitcoin. Would, you do have Bitcoin? I do have Bitcoin. And would you spend it? Would you spend it at, say, one of the, the Costa Coffees that's now accepting Bitcoin here on the street you know, of Gibraltar? I, I'm not at the stage yet where, for me, it's, a, it's, it's something that I would use on a regular basis. It's more of, a, of a buying some for the benefit of my kids in years to come, and I don't touch it. Okay, so it's, it's more the, the generational wealth yeah, category. Yeah, it's, it's just something that's it's fun. Yep. Um, I think people have to put the amount of money into it that you can afford to lose because you never know what's going to happen, like with anything new. Sure. Um, but uh, I, I am impressed by its resilience, even during this last hit. Uh, mm. It's held itself remarkably well. Um, has it taken a big drop? Yes. But look at the rest of the financial services market. That's taken a hell of a drop too. Yes. Um, so I, I, I think that um, I think it's demonstrated a level of resilience that I didn't expect it to have. So I, I think it'll, it'll, we'll, we'll see it back up shortly. So can I buy you a coffee later over Bitcoin? Yeah, with pleasure. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see the minister later. Instead, I ran into Neil Walker, managing director for Sandpiper Gibraltar. They run the Costa Coffee franchises in Jib. Hi, Neil. Hi, Jake. How are you doing today? I'm good. So why are we sat here in front of a Costa Coffee in Gibraltar? I'm a retailer. I, I own, well, I, I run shops and cafes in Gibraltar. I just happened, I guess, um, a little while ago to find Bitcoin and see everything that's happened on the Lightning Network. And I thought, you know, look, you know, look, look at this. Pe people, are, people are using mobile technology more and more and more. And the natural next step looks to me like, um, you know, enabling the Lightning Network in our stores. How many places are there currently accepting Bitcoin over Lightning in um in Gibraltar? In, for, for us, there's seven, um, but we're not the only ones accepting Bitcoin in Gibraltar. Uh, there are other, other retailers who've, who were accepting it before me, um, 
you know, it's at least half a dozen places on top. So I think, I think we're probably getting up to 12, 13, 14 places in Gibraltar that accept it. What is it with these British overseas territories and running with Bitcoin? This is about mobile payments and making things easier. Mm -hmm. The Lightning Network is, once you, once you get over the first hurdle of understanding how to send it QR code or, 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 or via address or whatever it is, it is so simple and easy and so quick. I believe it's going to be the payment network of the future, okay. which, is, which is why I brought it into Gibraltar. Um, and we'll just have to see what happens. And final question, why Bitcoin over Lightning? Why not, say, Dogecoin? You know, Elon Musk likes that. It's really Elon quick Musk. as well, isn't it? It's, uh... <laughs> well, you know, where, where, where is the adoption? Where is, when, when, you look at, when you look at the Lightning Network and you have Strike, Cash App, you have um, grassroots movements that have gone from being, you know, Bitcoin Beach started as a, grass, a grassroots movement in one village and now El Salvador have adopted the Bitcoin and Lightning Network across the whole country. You've got multiple EPOS providers, so the, the TIL providers, integrating Lightning Network payments into the TIL. Okay. Um, so, uh, I mean, for me, it, it's about the network and the adoption and for the Lightning Network I think that it's exponentially growing and we'll get there um, so that soon you know in most places whether you know it or not you can be using the Lightning Network to pay to pay for your purchases. Gibraltar, Bitcoin Rock. Bitcoin Rock. Come over, spend some sats. Exactly. <laughs> Price of Bitcoin this year, sub 30k. Yeah. Thoughts? Board Ape Yacht Club, buy or sell? <laughs> could get a bit angry, I think. <laughs> About to walk to Spain. This bridge was one million pounds. Should have bought Bitcoin. Corta, corta, corta. corta.